Welcome back to Bad Balance. Today I wanted to look at Ultra Street Fighter 4 Elena. I'm actually an Elena main myself, so I think I have a pretty nuanced understanding of how strong she is and why. Of course, since my understanding comes from playing her more so than fighting her, I might have a controversial take here and there over the course of the video. That being said, I think she's very comfortably top 2, so I'm no Elena apologist. Normally, I'd only go over things I think are broken, but one of the main things about Elena is her distinct lack of weaknesses, so I'm going to glance at her generally strong tools to give the broken stuff more context, then talk about the broken stuff afterward. That all being said, I've got a lot to say about Elena, so I'll put a timestamp to jump straight to the broken stuff in the video description. This video is going to be long, but don't go thinking that means Elena's better than Vanilla Sagat. She's top tier, but in a relatively balanced game. Before I even get into normals, I'd like to mention her backdash is probably the 4th or 5th best backdash in the game. It has a good amount of invincibility, and goes a good distance in a pretty short duration, so it's not very committal. In the SF4 engine, having a good backdash can be very helpful for escaping pressure. Elena has what I would call the game's best crouching jab, in a game where crouching jab is generally a character's best normal. This thing has 3 frame startup, and goes unbelievably far. It's a fairly easy 3 frame link into itself. You can link up to 4 of them, and even at max range she can convert into several different special moves. A 3 frame normal going this far and being convertible was huge in certain matchups. She could punish a lot of things which didn't seem like they were intended to be unsafe. A lot of attacks were minus in SF4 so you had to space them, which was really hard against this jab. Like all of Elena's attacks, the animation is a kick. I remember a lot of players and commentators alike calling this a low short, and pretty much everyone blocked it low. Even though you don't actually have to. Elena's actual low starters require either an unplinkable one frame link, or some degree of raw commitment. So she appreciates opponents respecting her lows without her having to make them. Because once they're blocking low, she has incredible overhead abuse, which I'll get to later. Low strong is another one of Elena's strongest points. It's a bit similar to Vega's low strong as far as pokes go. It's 5 frame startup with good reach and almost no lingering her box. And even ignoring EX Mallet Smash's properties as an overhead for a second, it still has incredible synergy with low strong, since it allows Elena to convert any errant poke into a combo to any ender. You can link low strong from low jab. It's a one frame link, but it's very useful. This link allows you to do as many EX Mallet Smashes as you want in a single combo. Between just low jab and low strong, she can beat tons of characters on the ground. Both attacks are incredibly fast with great range, and she can hit them pretty safely whenever the opponent gets even kind of close. The fact that she can poke and counter poke so easily, while also being almost impossible to counter poke herself, kills a lot of characters' effective ranges and makes her extremely dominant in neutral. And unlike Vega who's similarly neutral dominant, she actually has a good variety of anti-airs. Low forward is similar to low strong, but it's a bit slower, a bit shorter, and you can't generally link into it. It's a real low, so cancels into her overhead are extremely obnoxious even if you don't consider the mix-up components. This quick low overhead sequence will open up most new players for free. Elena's slide was crazy good in a ton of matchups. The range was insane, and if she spaced it, it was very difficult to punish. For most of the animation, she goes under fireballs. This meant that from greater than half screen, it's almost impossible to throw a fireball against her. This was especially strong against slow fireballs, which are normally the best ones. This flipped fireball balance on its head, since several characters were built around abusing good slow fireballs. Which really neutered characters like Goken and Guile, who rely heavily on their fireballs for neutral. Both characters have a very difficult time against her. It also gave her incredible punishing power. Oddly, it wouldn't actually go under some fireballs, most notably Kikoken. And Elena's other fireball answers are surprisingly kind of bad. Particularly, she had one of the slowest jumps in the game, based on her SF3 super jump. 
Reading a fireball with a jump wasn't usually a good option for her. You could sometimes get punished even if your read was good. Crouch Run Huss was another low poke with alarming range. It was minus 16 on block, but the high pushback meant most characters struggled to punish it. Also, for some reason Elena had low profile for the whole recovery, which could result in some hilarious scenarios. The low profile meant you could use this to preempt mid-range fireballs. Towards forward was an overhead with only 12 frames startup. This is unbelievably fast for an overhead, and functionally pretty unreactable. If you meaty with it, it had 3 active frames so you could link out of it. And you could always link out of it on counter hit. It was only minus 3 on block, so most of the cast had to either nail a 1 frame punish or couldn't punish it at all. And if it was meaty, then it went to minus 1 or minus 2, so almost no one could punish. Towards Strong was another overhead. It's 20 frame startup, so quite a bit slower, but you could still catch someone with it. And it had quite a bit more range. This one was minus 2 on block. And it actually led to a link on hit in any context. Combos out of overheads were pretty rare in SO4. Remember that, that's going to be important later. Her final notable normal was back roundhouse. This beat throws and avoided lows for most of its animation, which means it beat both standing and crouching techs. It's zero on block, which is fine for Elena who has a 3 frame jab. It meant basically that any time she got in she could either throw or back roundhouse for a safe 50-50. It also had a combo on counter hit. It was also a nice meaty or reset option against grapplers. Now for specials. As I've been showing, Elena's spin scythe was pretty good for its ability to combo from jab even at max range. But for the most part, that was the only notable thing about it. The EX version comboed to Ultra 1 in the corner, and the routes were actually pretty strong and very easy. I do want to mention her Ultra 1 setups, because I actually think Ultra 1 is really good for her too, though obviously I think Ultra 2 is generally better. Mid-screen you could FADC the Spin Scythe and link her target combo, which also led to Ultra 1. Scratch Wheel, Elena's uppercut, had incredibly short startup and recovery. You could whiff the light one really quickly in neutral for meter, and lots of characters couldn't contest it easily without risking getting hit by it or hitting her while she was blocking. This had good synergy with Light Link's Tail, which also whiffed quickly. Link's Tail was very hard to punish on the ground, Scratch Wheel was very hard to punish with a jump. Either way, this forced the opponent to rush Elena down rather than turtling. The Light Scratch Wheel only had 3 frame startup. Elena could already do 3 frame punishes with her crouch jab, but having a 3 frame special move made punishing minus 3 attacks incredibly consistent due to the large reversal window in SF4. This made it harder for Balrog to use dash punch or DiCaprio to use rapid dagger, for example. The EX version has total invincibility and actually starts in 4 frames. This is fast enough to beat most safe jumps. makes it very good as an anti-air, which leads to Ultra 1 on FADC. FADCing on the ground makes it safe on block. And on hit, that FADC actually led to a grounded combo rather than a juggle. The conversions could get pretty strong, though of course it was expensive. Overall, this was a really good DP, especially to have on a defensive character. Rhino Horn wasn't much to write home about, but if you were close, you could actually go into it from most starters. And you could juggle all versions into EX Uppercut, which actually did good damage. 
People usually remember Elena's neutral and healing, but it's important to remember her punish damage wasn't too bad either. All versions of Mallet Smash are overheads. Unfortunately, the non-EX versions are all somewhat reactable. And the light and medium ones are really unsafe on block. The heavy version is only minus one on block. And it arcs high, so it can easily go over stuff. It was basically a very slow Hazanshu. But unlike Hazanshu, it was really plus on hit and it had some great conversions. Okay, that was all stuff that was generally strong about her, but not really overpowered. So let's talk about what was actually truly broken. EX Mallet Smash was a 15 frame overhead that went half screen. By some divine error, Elena only got the first hit of EX Mallet Smash, it was actually more plus. Human reaction time for overheads is about 270 to 300 milliseconds, or about 16 to 18 frames. This hits in 250 milliseconds. So unless your reactions were absolutely on point, you had to rely on prediction to block this. I'm absolutely certain there are going to be a lot of YouTube comments from people insisting they never ever miss this block. But speaking from my time as an Elena main, it worked on everyone at least sometimes, usually half the time, online and offline. You couldn't just react to Elena turning yellow either, since she has another cancel which repeatedly hits low and is truly unreactable at 10 frame startup. For reference, Dudley's overhead is also 15 frames. People get hit by that all the time. Dudley usually needed a meaty or close reset to pull his overhead out. Elena can do it from any poke anywhere up to half screen. And she could also just do it raw and neutral. I had the highest success doing it raw like this actually. Probably worked a good 80% of the time or more. You couldn't crouch against Elena. Even disregarding that it's an overhead, the range makes it a really good punish starter. On hit, it's plus 4, so it's a 2 frame link into her low jab. There's a secret agreement among all Elena players to claim it's a one-frame link. Unlike many overhead links in SF4, this link works on standing and crouching opponents alike. And it's also looser than one frame. Again, it's super rare to have a combo from an overhead at all. The fact that Elena has several is probably a relic of her being ported from Cross Tekken, where overhead links were more common. Did I mention it punishes focus, focus forward dash, and focus back dash? In fact, beating focus with it guarantees that the second hit will be a counter hit, making it plus 7. It's ridiculous that you have a combo from EX Mallet Smash at all. In SF3, it's 21 frame startup, same as her light mallet smash here. And in Cross Tekken, it was 22 frame startup. Why is it 15 frame startup in this game? EX Mallet Smash is minus 5 on block, so it's theoretically quite punishable. Punishing optimally was almost always much harder, since most 3 frames are light normals. Not to mention, this game had no normal input buffer, and lots of characters have no 3 frame option, so they had to nail a 1 or 2 frame punish to punish at all. It was somewhat rare that I got punished for this. And when I did, the punish was often just a throw. But it gets worse. It's a 2 hit overhead, so the game checks twice while you're blocking that you're not hitting down. Doing something like a reversal special move was made harder if you had to hit down during the motion. Not only that, but Elena could just as easily cancel her button into Link's tail, which is either 10 or 8 frame startup depending on version, and hits low repeatedly. The synergy with EX Mount Smash is already ridiculous, but Link's tail is a beast in its own right. All versions combo from lights and have good range. All versions are unsafe, but punishing it is a nightmare. Light is only one hit and is minus seven on block, so quite difficult to punish already. Medium is two hits and minus nine on block. People trying to punish light might eat the second hit of medium if they release down back for their punish. And heavy is four hits, minus 13 on block. Heavy can catch people trying to punish light or medium. It's a true block string all the way across for all versions. This means it's impossible to mash out Reversal Shoryuken or Ultra or something between the hits. And you'll get punished for trying because low-end overhead hits can hit through Auto Guard, the mechanic that keeps you blocking during true block strings. 
I can't count the number of times I did a cancel to Heavy Link's Tail, and the opponent blocked the first two hits, then ate the next two. And I can't count the number of times I did a cancel to Medium Link's Tail, and the opponent held down back waiting for the last two hits of Heavy. And I did cancels to Link's Tail like crazy. People always told me they could react to EX Mallet, but once I actually played them, online and off, virtually every Link's Tail cancel I did would work. This is because tons of players just automatically did stand block once they saw a cancel of any kind and thought they were actually reacting to EX Mallet. Once I played them a little longer, they'd usually start blocking low more. And then the EX Mallet smash would start working. I could cancel to either one, and I'd have a 50-50 chance of opening my opponent up. It's theoretically possible to hold down back constantly during any Link's Tail cancel, and hit a crouching button twice during the light and medium Link's Tail punish windows. Because you're still holding down back, you'll keep blocking if it's a higher version. But even if you can do this, you can't easily cancel the punish attempts because that requires standing. And while doing that, you still have to be able to react to Elena's 15 frame overhead. And even if you can do all that, Elena can just FADC any version of Link's Tail on block. And it's a reaction FADC. On hit, she can just let Link's Tail rock and take the damage in knockdown. But on block, she can see it's being blocked and FADC to get plus frames instead. She only spends meter if she's wrong. And everything I've been talking about is all why it's so obnoxious to block. Link's Tail is even more obnoxious on hit. For some reason, the heavy version is a hard knockdown that she can again combo from any light. You could use this to escape the corner. Or to set up an ambiguous cross up. Which could then lead to a background house or grab mix up. Or another EX Mallet vs. Link's Tail mix up. both of which lead to another hard knockdown, so it's looping pressure. You can also just use the hard knockdown as an opportunity to heal. Elena's high-low mix-up is genuinely probably the best up-close mix-up in the game, better than Zangief, and she doesn't even have to worry about reversals, since EX Mallet Smash is really fast and hard to counter hit, while Link's Tail will outright punish Shoryuken motions during block strings without a reversal window ever existing. She's already one of the strongest characters on defense, why is she so strong on offense too? I mentioned using FADC to make Link's Tail safe, but it's also incredibly plus on hit, allowing Link's into things like Elena Stand Fierce, or even her Ultra 1. Here are some sample combos from a random cancel to either EX Mount Smash or Heavy Link's Tail, just so you can scope the damage. You didn't see it much because you didn't see Ultra 1 Elena much, but as I'm showing, EX Link's Tail was also fast enough to combo from lights, and it set up her Ultra 1 anywhere on the screen. This means she could land it from pretty much any hit for one bar, even an overhead. Focusing on either her strong defensive neutral or her strong rushdown mix-up would give you a good playstyle against whichever the opponent was weaker to. This is in huge part why Elena had so many good matchups. She was Vega with anti-airs and Dudley with better range at the same time. The only real weakness she had was a reliance on meter. EX Mount Smash takes one bar. 
And to safely threaten with Link's Tail, you need to have two. Plus, her reversal costs one bar to do, and three bars to make safe. But Reliance on Meter is the most pretend weakness ever. It wasn't that Elena needed Meter, or else she didn't work. Instead, it was Elena having so many great ways of spending Meter between her great EX moves and FADCs that it was hard to choose which ones you wanted. One thing I think people rarely discuss when discussing balance and tears is how much mistakes on both sides favor Elena. Combo drops happen all the time. If Elena drops a plank, she usually gets a crouch jab cancelled to EX Mount Smash or Link's Tail. So if the opponent isn't blocking the right way, they'll just get opened up again. When Elena drops combos, it turns into a 50-50, and if the cancelled move hits, she just reset her own combo scaling. Compare this against the opponent, if they make a mistake punishing her, they might eat a hard knockdown. Or an FADC conversion. Or a combo from an overhead. And since you needed fast blocks and precise punishes, lag was also particularly detrimental to fighting Elena, compared to most characters. All this, and I barely talked about Elena's Ultra 2. To be frank, I actually think it's a bit overrated, and not actually Elena's best feature, though I do think it needs to be nerfed. Elena is a 950 HP character. Doing a partial heal recovered about 100 HP, a bit more or less depending on how full her Ultra Bar was. Even with two Ultras per round, she's an 1150 health character with no offensive Ultra. And don't get me wrong, that is very strong. The main thing about it that's overpowered is that it's just too free to use. Most Ultras are hard to combo into and require some specific setup, like sure you can have ADC, an EX move in the corner, or focus. Elena's healing only requires a decent knockdown. You can get it off of any combo. Or any throw. You could also do a Blood Ultra off of attacks you knew you were going to eat, for example a Fireball. You get net health back, after all. As I've been showing, Elena could push multiple punches to cancel the Ultra early. You pretty much had to do this, since if you didn't, Elena did a jump in place at the end and it had a huge recovery period. The only way to guarantee a full heal was to land a super. And even then, some characters could still punish it. Elena's super isn't hard to land, but you'd rather be using the meter elsewhere. People were very bad at punishing healing, which is one of the reasons I believe everyone overrated it. You basically cannot prevent Elena from doing a short healing, so you shouldn't try. What a savvy opponent should do is just use the healing time to approach Elena. If she does a full heal, they can react and jump in, immediately removing all the health she just healed. But that's not what people did. Invariably, they do something like a full screen ultra or tatsu. This is a worst of all worlds. If Elena did a long healing, she'd get a lot of HP back, and only eat a Tatsu or something when she could have eaten a full jumping combo. And if Elena did the short healing, she could block the attempted punish and usually punish it herself. The opponent would lose meter or health from their attempted punish while Elena got the healing off successfully. There's one other thing about healing which was really broken. The only way to gain Ultra Meter in SF4 is by taking damage. Losing 45% of your health fills half your Ultra Bar, losing 90% of it fills it completely. If you take white damage and recover, you keep the Ultra Meter and the health. This is why people focus fireballs. But Elena can use her Ultra Meter to restore her health which means she also builds more Ultra Meter than all other characters. In practice, it was incredibly rare to see three healings in a single round, but it wasn't that uncommon to see two. This brought some really weird tactics to the table. Against Chun-Li, as I mentioned, Elena can't slide under fireballs. 
And she can't easily jump over them like most characters. So Chun-Li can actually zone Elena really well. And Elena can't easily outpoke her either. But Elena can hang back and absorb fireballs, then heal when the opportunities permit. This lets her stay healthy even though she gets few openings and gets worn down from chip. This was shown very famously during EVO 2015 with Infiltration vs Gamer B. Both players played the matchup very optimally, but I think this single tournament set played a huge part in killing interest in the game as a whole. People were already starting to think Elena was broken, and this set really cemented it in the community's mind, even though the matchup in question is ironically considered to be 5-5 by most Elena players I've seen. As broken as Gil is in SF3, once he uses Resurrection, his super meter is empty for the rest of the round. And I'd say that's smart design. I think it should have been that way for Elena too. Once she heals, she can't heal again. Alternatively, if healing was on her super, that would have been a lot cleaner. She already has so many ways to use meter, so while healing super would have been good, it would have been fiercely competing with all her other tools. Spinning Beat Ultra could serve as a better Juggle Ultra, while Brave Dance could serve as a stronger Raw Ultra. Plus, she might have got some cool DP healing cancel DP combos. One last thing that makes Elena broken in a more literal sense is her Hurt Box. I was considering not even including this, since it seems to be bad programming rather than a deliberate balanced decision, but eventually I caved for the simple reason that it makes Elena stronger and thus more imbalanced. All of the broken Hurt Box stuff is extremely specific, so I'll just show a few example cases I saw while studying for this video. The way Elena's head moves during her EXDP recovery will prevent some characters' dashes from getting point blank. This can even result in you getting a far normal while extremely close to Elena. Which is catastrophic because far normals are usually much lower than close normals in addition to having no combo potential. The location of Elena's hurt box is very dishonest while jumping or walking. Combined with her high jump arc, it can appear that attacks pass right through her. People often complain that she's hard to anti-air even though her jump is so slow. This is the reason. I mentioned punishing Link's tails with crouching normals. Lots of characters' mids will pass right through her during recovery, making it that much harder to punish them. Prior to the 1.04 patch of USF4, Elena's normal crouching animation had low profile. This was absolutely crazy and made loads of attacks not work properly, but you can't play this Elena even on edition select. Original Elena was theoretically even stronger than the current one, but functionally she's gone forever, so all we have now are Relic YouTube videos. From a technical standpoint, a character who has 3 7s against half the cast, but 7 3s against the other half, is a mid-tier character, but still a character with absolutely abysmal balance. Elena is not that character. Elena has at least a slight advantage against all but 5 or so characters in the game, and a huge advantage against about a quarter of the cast. There are plenty of characters who she fights in relatively even and interesting matchups, but then she just flattens some otherwise viable characters in matchups that might be 7-3 or worse. So I'd say, even though I don't actually think she's super OP, she's definitely badly balanced. 